Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Thank you so much for tuning in once again to the Church Board Confessions Podcast. I'm your host, Emanuele Heke, and I am so blessed. I am so privileged. I am so highly favored to get behind this mic for the 125th time and to speak again and be used. Um, I got a couple of things to say before I get to this message. And the first thing I have to say is thank you for the love. Thank you for the support. Um, you know, for a lot of you guys that might follow me, uh, personally, you know, like I was, I woke up, what was it? Monday, Tuesday, one of those days, right? I woke up and there was just like a whole bunch of people that was like tagging me in their story and stuff like that. And, you know, when I looked at it, it was, um, everybody like tagging their Spotify wrapped and, you know, the podcast that they listened to, the top podcast they listened to, the most podcasts that they listened to and stuff like that. And, um honestly man a lot of you guys took that opportunity to uh just show the appreciation that you guys have for this podcast and shout out the podcast and even send me messages of encouragement and that was so that was so amazing like that was so amazing and it was so fulfilling and it was so it was so good like man like it's one thing to a lot of people, and and I don't say this to be prideful, but, you know, a lot of people listen to this podcast and, like, you look at the numbers, but when you look at the numbers, it's just the numbers, right? Um, but when you guys, like, reach out, you know, it's a face that's added to the number and um, even even the fact that there was a lot of people that reached out that I had no idea that they watched or that they listened, sorry. And that, that meant so much to me, um, I will say, and, like, you know, for those of you who are continuing to encourage me and telling me not to stop, not to stop, not to stop, there is no plan to stop. Um, so we're going to continue this. And, and I really appreciate that. And um, yeah, from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys so much for the support, for the love, for not just listening, but really supporting that. That's that's really been big. So I, I really appreciate that. Um, you know, but this thing is not about me. You know, like this thing is. Uh, this is all about the father. And I think that this episode is really a testament to the fact that, you know, these messages have been um, things that I've learned and the Holy Spirit have taught has taught me. Um, and I try my best every day to really just give you what he gave me. You know what I'm saying? And um, today we're going to really going to get to it. And before I go into that, like I have to say this, um, you know, you listening to this podcast you know, a lot of people, you guys might listen to it by yourself, I assume, maybe, um, you know, while you're driving or, you know, whatever, while you multitask, whatever it might be, you know, you listen to it by yourself. But need I say that there is, I, I really, I don't want to say this and sound like pride for anything. There's a lot of us, there's a lot of us, there's a lot of you guys that listen to this podcast and um, it's not just you. When I when I see the people that listen to this podcast, my vision is that we come together as a community. And the vision is that, you know, like, oh, yeah, we're not a church, but we are a ministry and and we can be a community. And I want us to be a community. Um, and as, as shameless of a plug as this is going to be, like, I genuinely feel like that's why the Poetry Jam is such a big deal is because everything we do right now is virtual. I'm talking to you through your phone, you know what I'm saying? Or like you're listening on YouTube, or I'm watching on YouTube or whatever it might be. But it's like, I don't just want it to stop there. I don't want this relationship that you have with, I guess, me or whatever, or like unassociated to just be a thing where it's like Monday morning, you're listening to this podcast. I'm I'm entirely, I'm so thankful for that. But at the same time, like I really do, I think the next frontier for unassociated is not to become more and more virtual, but to become more and more in person, you know, and have these events and have these times really for us to come together and have that communion. And I truly think that that cannot be traded for anything. That's my case, all right? That's my case. I would love, love, love for you guys to show up to this Poetry Jam January 29th. Um, tickets are on sale. If you're traveling over here, you need a place to stay, whatever it might be, hit me up or hit up, you know, DMR um, on the social, and we can help you with, like, you know, 
trying to find a place, whatever it might be, man. I really, I really want, I want the people, you're listening to this podcast. I want you to be there January 29th. That's what it is. I'm already expecting to, to meet a lot of people that I've only met on Instagram that day. So consider it, consider it. All right. Um, tickets are on sale. Uh, I'll probably put the link somewhere, (laughs) but I'm ready to get to this episode guys. Um, this episode, I'm, let me tell you something as I'm making this episode, as I'm writing down my notes for this, that, you know, the Holy Spirit was moving and it was active while I was writing things down. And I feel so enlightened myself. Um, and I, and I pray that this episode enlightens you as well. Today, I'm going to be talking to the people who God has called but he is not giving you the full picture. And God wants you to take a step. And you're the type of person, you need to know how everything is going to play out before you take a step. This episode is for you. And the message that I am telling you is to take that step. And you know that step. You know, a lot of us act like we don't know what to do, but we know what to do. We just don't know where we're going to end up after we do it. And if you're one of those people who think that you need to know everything before you take that step, You love the song Oceans, right? But you know everything before you take that step. I'm telling you that if God has told you to take a step, then take the step. I'm talking to the people. God has given you a glimpse, but he is not giving you the entire big picture. But he's grabbed your hand and he's told you to follow him. And he's essentially put you on a path and told you to walk without giving you the destination. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to us. Because I've, I'm one of these people right now, right now, right now. I'm, I'm one of those people right now. And, and, and this is a message that God has given me this week. We're scared. We're anxious. We are annoyed and we are frustrated. Because God is telling us to do these things. And he's not telling us how everything is going to work out. He's only given us a glimpse. Kind of like Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12, Abraham is told, or his name was Abram at that time, he's told, get up, get your things. I'm going to make you a great nation and you're going to go to this land that I will show you. All right. And then Abraham does it. And what's revealed to us in Hebrews chapter 11 is that it says, by faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place where he would later receive in in his as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. So Abraham experienced this to a degree as well. Yeah, I mean, he, he, you, can, you can argue that, well, he didn't know what was going to happen because he was going to be made a great nation. But the reality is that the word of God, which is inspired by this Holy Spirit, tells us that in the moment that God called him and told him to leave his household, stability, he had everything. He was good in his father's house. Leave the household and go to a place he didn't know where he was going. Kind of like a lot of us. God has told us to begin this journey, to begin this mission, to start walking on this path. And he is not telling us how everything is going to end up. And in many cases of life, it's very important to know the destination before you start doing anything. You know why it's so important to know the destination? Let's be real. It's important to know the destination because our knowledge of the destination is really what empowers us to continue to endure the trials and tribulations that we face today, isn't it? A lot of us are in school, right? The reason why we're enduring the studying and the long hours and the stress and the professors and so on is because we have that vision. One day, we're going to walk across that stage. We're going to have the degree. And by God's grace, we're going to use it and we're going to get a great job making good money. So we continue. We persevere. We are empowered by the destination. One day we'll get there. So I'm going to fight. I know this trial is hard, but I'm going to fight today. Some of us, we clock in every day at work with annoying co-workers and weird bosses. Because we know in two weeks, we're going to get that paycheck. Oh, man, we're going to get that. We're going to get that. That, that paycheck, we're going to make that money. We're going to get whatever we want to get with that money. There's the destination. We have the destination. We know what it looks like. It's a lot of us. We live this life. We endure these struggles. And why do we endure these struggles? Because I reckon that the sufferings that we will endure today 
cannot compare to the glory that shall be revealed. We know that one day we're going to get to the end. There will be no suffering. There will be no pain. Why? Because God is God. God. God has made it that way. He has told us the destination of of all all of our lives to a degree, so then we're able to endure what we go through right now. So so you see, sometimes, a lot of the times, rather. God puts us in situations that we know exactly what the destination is. And, and our knowledge of the destination, our hope in that destination reaching there is what keeps us going. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Well, sometimes God doesn't tell us the destination. But he's still grabbing our hand and telling us this is the path that you're going to walk on. Follow me. And for those people. Who do not have, sorry, let me close this drawer. Who do not have the destination, because God didn't give it to you. I, I have a message to you, and I'm telling you to not to not lose heart. You see, when God doesn't give us the destination, it becomes really hard to endure. It at least becomes harder to endure, you know, because we don't have hope in the destination. We don't know how things are going to work out. So then when we ask ourselves, why are we suffering like this? Why are we enduring all of this suffering? We don't really have an answer, do we? I mean, we don't have a clear cut answer because we don't have a clear cut vision of what we're supposed to even be expecting. Right. But I'm telling you, the lack of enthusiasm and fervor that you now have because you don't know the destination, it's not justified. The mediocrity is not justified. The lack of trust is not justified. And we're going to get to that today. Sometimes. God will not give you the full picture, but he will still call you out into the deep. He will still implore you to take that leap of faith. He will still tell you to take that step. He's not going to tell you how it ends up. <laughs> So then you don't get to have your hope rest on how everything is going to end up and everything's going to be this way and be that way. No, your hope now must rely on him and him alone. It has to rely on who he is and his character. It has to rely on the fact that he has perfect judgment and has to rely on the fact that you believe that his will and his plan is perfect. His ways are perfect. That's what you now have to believe. That's what you now hold on to. And that is all that you get. And I'm here to tell you today that that is all that you need. That's all that you need. We don't need to know where God is taking us to have faith in God. We don't need to know that God is going to take us to this one stage where everything's going to be okay. That, 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 that we should have enthusiasm. That's why we should have enthusiasm. Sometimes God doesn't want us to just simply have hope in the destination, but he wants us to have hope directly in him. Our comfort is not going to come from knowing. Our comfort is going to come from holding his hand day by day, step by step. And this right here requires a different level of faith. It truly does. I, can, I cannot stress. It, it requires a different level of faith, ladies and gentlemen. But God does not hide the full picture from us just so we can stress. That's not the reason why he would hide the full picture from us sometimes. He hides the full pictures for multiple reasons. And I'll tell you one reason. Sometimes he has to hide the full picture of uh, uh, from us so we can enter a new level of intimacy with him. That's the reality. Sometimes God doesn't show us the full picture in order to enter into a new level of intimacy with us. Because if we can't have hope that we're going to obtain a, a destination, then that means that along the entire path, we have to consistently follow him. Our eyes need to be glued to the back of his head. We have to trust him. We have to learn more about him. We have to obey him. We have to be dependent on him. And is this not the foundation of our relationship? With the Father, our trust in the Father. So sometimes he doesn't want us to have hope in telling us where he's taking us, but he wants to have hope that, hey, I'm with my dad. So no matter where we're going, I know that his will is perfect. I know his judgment is sound and I know who he is. This essentially is like forcing us to acknowledge him. 
when we don't know where we're going, we're in a sense forced to acknowledge God every single day because he's the one that's leading you. You're forced to make sure that you're in his presence every day. And when I tell you when you're actually in God's presence every day, this is not the time where you stress. It's not the place where you stress. This is where you have peace. This is where you have joy. This is where you have liberty. This is where you have grace. This is where you have thanksgiving. This is where this is the time where you seek God's face. But a lot of us, we do not seek God's face. Instead, we we drown in our own self-pity because we don't know where we're going. And we're going through all these obstacles and we don't know what we're doing with life. And life is just hitting us from all these different angles. But this is the time where you're supposed to draw nearer to God. And he will draw nearer to you. Because in this moment, he doesn't want you to have faith. In the fact that everything is going to work out perfectly or everything is going to work out a certain way. God wants you to have faith and just tr build your trust in him walking you through day by day. And I can't I can't say this without remembering the times when I was that person not knowing when I was going to get the job, not knowing what I was doing, waking up every day, post grad, still not getting no job, living with my parents, doing all the different stuff. And it's like. I felt so like, man, like, what am I supposed to expect? Like, what's going to come? How am I supposed to? And in those times, like, when I look back at those times, imagine if I use all those days that I was stressing to just seek God's face more. And maybe there's some of you guys that are listening to this right now. And maybe that this is why th this message came to you. Is that you are so caught up in making sure that your future is this way or that way. And you don't know why God is not talking to you more. And not, don't know why God is not doing this more, doing that more. But maybe it's because God wants you to, number one thing is for you to be more concerned with trusting him more. And, and knowing him more. And learning about him more. And listening to him more. Rather than complaining. Maybe that's why he's not giving you the destination. Because he wants you to trust him along the path. Man. Maybe there's something along the path that's so important. As we can see, all these things that we that we get when we're in his presence, all these things that we see. Like, think about it. Because as you are drawing closer to God along the path to a destination that you don't even know, it starts to hit you that maybe your life right now isn't about getting to the destination, even. You see, some of us think that we have to get to the destination before God's glory can shine through us. But something that we have to understand is that God doesn't just get glory from the destination. He also gets glory from the path to the destination. God doesn't just get glory from our from getting to the destination. Some of us think we have to get to the mountaintop. Everybody sees us and we shine so bright and we tell everybody about God and we would love that to be the case all the time. But at the same time, there's there's a reason why God is taking you on the specific path that he's taking you in order to get to the destination, because God doesn't want just glory from the mountaintop. He wants glory in the valley as well. That's where he wants it as well. He wants glory through the suffering as well, because, mind you, people are watching you as you suffer. And when they see the joy and the peace and the goodness that you have while you are suffering, they will ask, who is your God? And that's when the glory shines through you, through your suffering, through the pathway to the destination, through the tribulations and the obstacles you are facing in order to get to the destination. It's not just about the destination. It's not just about that. It's about people being able to see the fruits of the spirit being exercised and being applied while you are going on this pathway through all these trials and tribulations. They are molding you. They are perfect. There's a reason why we count it all joy when we fall into diverse temptations because it's going to work patience in you and then you're going to be perfect wanting nothing. Don't forget that the trials and tribulations that we endure in life is not just about suffering, but it's about literally molding us 
and our character to be more like Christ. And then there are some of us. God's not going to give you the destination. He's not going to give you the full picture. You know why he's not going to give you the full picture? Because if he gave you the destination, rather than following him in order to get to that destination, a lot of us would end up trying to make our own path. We would draw our own maps, we draw our own routes, and we try to get there as quick as possible. What do we? I know. I know I would. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> We try to get there as quick as possible. God gave us the destination. All right, boom. Because sometimes, you know, we might not say it out loud, but sometimes we think that we know more than God. We think that our way to the destination will be better than his way to the destination. So we start to do our own thing. Right. God will call us to a destination, but then he also calls us to a path that takes so long to get to the destination. Ask David. Right. He said, David, I'm, I'm, I'm anointing you to be king, didn't he? Then how many years did it take for David to actually be king? He went through all these trials and tribulations playing cat and mouse with Saul. Sometimes God gives us a destination and we make our own course, our own route to it. Ask Abraham. God gave him the destination. He said, I'm going to make you a great nation, which means, yeah, you're going to have offspring. But then Abraham said, all right, I'm going to take it upon my own hands. God's taking too long. It's been years. What's going on? Where's my slave Haggai or Hagar, Haggai, whatever. Lies with her, has a baby. And God said, that wasn't the way that I wanted to do it. That's not my pathway. And here we are again, because you're going to get to God's destination by going through God's pathway. That's what he wants, because we're going back to the same idea where God is not just in the business of getting glory. Once you get to the destination, God is in the business of getting glory through the pathway he is taking you to get to the destination because God didn't want to use the destination was having a great nation from Abraham. But God didn't want to get there by using the fertile woman. He wanted to get there by using the barren woman. So along the pathway to the promise, to the destination of having a great nation come from Abraham, he wanted to also get the glory from, hey, I can make a nation come from a barren woman. You know what I'm saying? It's not just about the destination. That's important. Don't get me wrong. God gets glory from it. But God wants to get glory from the things that you're doing every day. God wants the pathway that you're on for you to grow, for you to be with him, for you to follow him, for you to develop a new level of intimacy with him. But all of us are just so fixated on, on, on the end. So then any type of roadblock that we have, we get so discouraged. Or any time we feel like we don't have the big picture, we don't even take the step. And I, I can't, I, I have to ask, wow, this episode is flown, flown by. I have to ask because, you know, God kind of called me out a little bit. There are some of us who we don't want to take the step until God shows us the full picture. We are, in a, we are essentially refusing to take a leap of faith until God shows us the full picture. Even though we know that God is pulling us, God has put us on a path. God told us to start walking, but because he doesn't want to show us everything, we don't take a step. So because God doesn't promise you a happy ending, you're not going to serve God. And if that's the case, then I'm going to ask you, why do you follow God? Do you follow God because you love him and you recognize that it is a privilege that you, a sinner, can be picked and chosen to be to 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 bear to to, to show his glory and point others to him as 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 an image bearer? Or is it because you follow God because you you think that you're going to get fame and you're going to get riches and you're going to have a stable family, you're going to have financial stability and so on. And I'm not saying it's bad to want those things, but I'm saying it is bad if that's only the only reason why you're following God. If that is the reason that you're following God. So let me tell you something, man. I want us, you, you're listening. I want you to get to a point where when someone asks you, why do you do what you do? 
the first thing that comes out of your mouth is not because I'm going to take care of my family one day. I'm not saying that's bad. Or because I want to be rich one day. I want to make money. Or because I'm doing... I want the first thing that comes out of your mouth to say, because God asked me to. There are some of us, we lose enthusiasm. Some of us, we lose fervor. Some of us, we don't have any zeal in the things that we are doing because God has not given us the full picture. God has not promised us that everything is going to end up with us being rich and famous. But in actuality, that zeal and that enthusiasm should come from the very fact that God asked you to do something. You a sinner. He has grace on you to still use you and for you to still be made in his image. I want us to have enthusiasm about even the menial jobs that God asked us to do because he asked us to do it. So we're going to do it and we're going to do it great and we're going to do it as big as we can, as best as we can. We're going to give it our all. We're not going to hold back. We're not going to stay on the seashore. We're not going to not take that leap of faith. We're going to do all those things. Because day by day, we're holding on to God's hand. Day by day, one day at a time. Let me tell you something. If you are following God just because of what you can get out of God, that is not surrender. That's not surrender. Surrender looks like you are following God no matter what. Through any circumstance, by all means, you're, you are following God. But if you're, if you're only following God because what you think you can get from God, that's not surrender. That's a transaction. This is, that's business. And I'm, I'm telling God is not trying to do business with you. God is trying to be your father. God's trying to have a relationship with you. God's trying to have you recognize him as your father who you can be dependent on. So my message to the people who are entering into 2022 and you are still scared what well, you don't know how the year is going to be or what let let this maybe this is the message that you need to hear before you step into the into the um into the uh, year maybe god's going to reveal to you how everything's going to go maybe he won't But I pray that everyone that is listening right now, that you have the mindset that no matter what God calls me to, this path that God has me walking on, I will do my very best. I will have zeal. I will have enthusiasm. And I'll give it my all. Not because I think that it's always going to end up perfect. Not because I think I'm not going to have any obstacles. I'm not going to have any problems by the end of this. No, but because you want God's glory to be shown through every checkpoint on the pathway to your destination. So if you don't have the big picture, you don't have all the pieces of the puzzle, that's fine. You have God today. What does he want you to do today? Then do it. And do it enthusiastically. Give it your all for his glory. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for this message. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for uh, using us, Father. And for a lot of us who we don't we don't know we don't know how this is all going to end. We, you haven't given us the big picture. You haven't given us a destination. Help us to still follow you enthusiastically, with love, because we love you. Because we love you, God. And Father, we pray that in every step that we take, that your glory shine forth through us, O oh God. And we point men and women onto you, as your image bearers. Help us. Find glory, take glory in our suffering, take glory while we're in the valley, and take glory while we're in the mountaintop. Help us as we enter into 2022 very soon. Um, be with everyone during this, you know, holiday season as well, Father. Um, and, you know, grow us, grow us, Father, as individuals and as a community, Lord. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be proclaimed through all of our lives. And, for anyone that needs healing, Father, in any way, shape, or form, Father, you who is the God of all flesh, bring healing to their life. Heal them. 
physical, mental, I pray that your healing power overwhelm your children in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 I love you guys. Hope you guys have an amazing week. Um, feel free to hit me. Feel free to hit me. Any, any questions or anything like that. Look, if there's any questions, you can go to www.unassociated.com slash askchurchboy. I suck at continuing to remember to announce that on this podcast, but I do take topic suggestions and I do answer questions. You know what I'm saying? We did like a oh, Ask Church Boy thing. Sorry, guys. Sometimes I have a lot on my mind and I forget things. Okay. Mm, okay. Well, I love you guys. You guys have an amazing uh, week and yeah, peace. Thank you.